I'm about to train with real medieval grapplers to find out if it's just an interesting hobby or if it could actually Whoa. help me as a jujitsu competitor. This sounds more dangerous than I thought it might be. I don't know if you can see my face, but this is way more intense than I anticipated. I'll be taking two <laughs> classes tonight to find out just how real this is. I'm in San Jose, California, outside of a pretty unique martial arts school, where I'm meeting up with my friend Matt so he can film my training tonight. What's up, dude? Hey. Waiting inside for me is Stephen right, Fick, who I have yet to meet in person and have only been exchanging scary text messages with thus far. I had asked him if I'd actually be able to live spar with someone tonight, and he said it's a little dangerous, so we'll see what happens. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Hello. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, I'm Steven. Josh. Nice to meet you, Josh. So this is, what is the name, where are we? Welcome to Davenrich European Martial Arts School. Or okay. we just call it DMAS. DMAS, and what should I call you? Steven is good. Historically, maestro, master, it's the 21st century. Steven works. I do like maestro though. You, is... You're welcome to call me maestro. <laughs> I am, and I brought my jujitsu gi. This is clearly not the appropriate attire. We work in street clothes, which historically is what they did. I wear these boots all the time. If I don't know how to move in boots, these become a hindrance. Let me change my street you clothes. You got again. it. Okay, sounds good. Um, okay, so I changed my street clothes, and I see you've also added some additional These implements. are my work clothes. Okay. So we have the long sword, and then if they get close, the dagger. Do these all have like a uh, dull blades? They do. Yeah, they do, they okay. Do. Can I hold this one? Please. Wow. We're gonna talk about wrestling with a tool. We have our version of Kimura. Steven is referring to a figure four lock around an opponent's arm, which can break the elbow and or the shoulder. This is a super common submission or control position in Jiu Jitsu, named after a man called Kimura. And Steven is using it as an example of how we can apply leverage to the human body. But we call it Ligadura. Instead of just using my arm, we have a 90 centimeter lever that we can bind with. It's a deadly Kimura, yeah. essentially. <laughs> yeah. okay. Where should we start with the tour? Well, why don't we start on this side? Okay. Dimas has kids and adult classes, ranging from grappling and wrestling with the sword, <laughs> which are the two that I'll be doing, all the way to long sword. Oh, that's heavy. Rapier, sword and shield, an archery lane. I don't know if you can see that that well on camera, but that is definitely a sharp tip. Axe throwing, and surprisingly, even airsoft. But that part's just for fun. They put a pretty heavy emphasis on safety. Your head is bigger than it looks. Uh, it's <laughs> like it's the only thing that gets hurt here most often is pride. Before coming here, I did absolutely no research so that I could come in with a completely open mind. I know nothing about this martial art. What is, the, what is this called? You'll hear it often referred to as HEMA. Right. Historic European martial arts. Okay. The main thing I was wondering was how practical this is as a martial art versus just a historical interest. I've never been to a Renaissance festival, but that's the closest thing to medieval in the modern times that comes to mind. And most of it looks performative. <laughs> oh my God! I spent the last two years competing all over the world in 70 jiu-jitsu tournaments, so everything I learned needs to be applicable in that setting. I discussed this a bit with Matt before we showed up. I think jiu-jitsu and like judo and things like that work because there's like actual sparring in a competitive environment. I'd heard of medieval MMA before, but that's in full armor, and I also didn't think that that's what was gonna happen either. This question of practicality isn't unique to HEMA either. There are plenty of martial arts which may be rooted in fundamental principles of manipulating a human body, but which focus mainly on kata or choreography and not really modern fighting. And also, just because HEMA is old is actually irrelevant. The martial arts I'm focusing on are super old too. Anyway, I was interested to know more about where this all came from, so Steven took me to the next location on the tour while I wondered if I'd be able to spar anybody tonight without weapons or armor. I'll take you into my two favorite rooms. This isn't about just violence. Welcome to our library. There were shelves upon shelves of manuscripts and research of duels and battles and weapons and armor. So it allows us to understand not just the how, but the why. This is the one that I primarily work from, a 600 year old fighting manuscript. Here's the wrestling portion of it. I started in 1989. I was invited to a tournament and that got the snot beat out of me. Welcome to my armory. I learned the old fashioned way. I got the piss kicked out of me for years. Are there submissions? Is it points based? How does that work? In armor, it was 
to the fall. So somebody falls over? Yep, it wasn't just falling, it was throwing or kicking or right. tripping. This sounds more dangerous than I thought it might yeah. be. Turns out, as with any martial art, you can make it as relaxed or intense as you want. That's Steven back in 2012. That wasn't Steven, but that's another example of HEMA in action. Put two people in a ring together and tell them to fight, and you'll be sure to see some action, no matter what the sport is. Here's a more recent video of Steven in 2022, testing his expert level knife instructor certification. I was mostly looking forward to the unarmed grappling, which is my second class tonight, so I could see what the overlap is with jujitsu. How much would you say HEMA is hobby-based versus practical application? It's the hobby that gets you into it. Okay. However, when everybody carried something like this, right. how many people do you know that carry a pocket knife? The techniques that kept people safe then will help keep us safe now. My, my number one self-defense tool is running. Yeah, I tell everybody here, I don't care how good of a sword fighter you ever become. What I do want you to get is perfect self-control. Should we get into the class right now? Yeah, let's get you okay. a sword. Cool. I feel like I've just been knighted. There's some girth to that. Are you not entertained? That they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Do people ever name their swords? They do. Okay. We have a rule here that you cannot name it unless it's drawn blood. Wow, we got a bit, lot of people today. Before we started class, there was something first that I had to ask him. I know you mentioned that we might be able to find somebody who I can actually spar with later. I don't yes. know if that's still on the table yes, or not, and but. It'll either be one of my higher students or myself. Okay. Mostly for safety. Right. We started with a warm up, and it was a pretty good workout for my shoulders. I was already starting to do some things wrong though. Unsheath it? Okay. After we were done there, we broke off into separate groups so I could actually get a private sword wrestling lesson from Steven and another student. Steven started by showing me some basic positions and I was surprised that we actually hold the sword by the blade. The medieval sword would only be a little bit sharper than a table knife. So as long as it doesn't slide in your hand, it's not gonna cut you. Got it. And if I'm fighting with Justin and I cut my hand, that's a lot better than what he intends to do to me. So yeah, you would normally have gloves on and a little bit of protection. We're gonna get you gloves before we go in. Then he walked me through the first technique. Because we're working in armor, my targets are the armpit, the throat, the eyes, the crotch, and the palm. Pull the palm point back, point forward. I'm gonna push my point up and into position. So then I can just cut his throat off that. I was wondering how this would actually work, so he demonstrated it on me so I could feel it. Okay, interesting. Whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a, that was that wasn't acting. That was um, that's actually very strong. I'm surprised by that. I thought I could Boom. just let go of the sword, but for one, it's difficult to let go because of the gloves, and second, if I just let go, then that could put me in a dangerous position. That's the concept of dilemmas, just like we have in jujitsu. He wanted to show the counter to this, which starts to put us at risk of getting hit in the face with a sword, so he went to find me a mask. Your head is bigger than a uh, <laughs> In the meantime, I wanted to know a little bit about my training partner. What, uh, why'd you start doing it? What made you start it? Swords are cool? Yeah. Yeah. What attracted you to it? Uh, swords are cool. <laughs> okay. Just not, it's really just swords are cool? Yeah. yeah. I was starting to get close to 30. I'm like, I really should start doing stuff. I always wanted to try HEMA. Are you doing like competitions or anything? Or? I've done a couple of tournaments, but I'm okay. not big on that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I wouldn't say our school's tournament vocals. Okay. Now that I had a proper face mask, though, he yeah, could fully yeah, demo the first technique. <laughs> oh, man. Shit's about to get real. Oh, okay. But first, he wanted me to trust my safety gear. Whoa. Ready? Wait, hold on, let me check the... Ready? Yep. Whoa. As he showed me the technique, once again, I was surprised by the strength of it. <laughs> <laughs> that, wow. It might look like I'm being over dramatic or acting, but the moment he like gets the sword in there, like it's even hard to like let go of the sword. Like he just has control of my entire upper body. It's pretty crazy. So go ahead and stab me again. Jesus I can take you lots of different ways. Yeah, yeah. We repped a few variations and I was starting to see what he meant by the use of leverage. And how this concept was similar to how we think about controlling opponents in jujitsu, much like with the Kimura trap we talked about earlier. 
Oh, this is, this is quite intense. We always go around and take time to share something we learn. Me? Oh, this is my first day, so I learned how much leverage you can actually have with this. I didn't know what to expect. So I wouldn't even be able to say what technique we did or anything, but I learned like the four basic positions and then like really understanding how to use the long side of the lever to generate like the most force against the, the opponent. So that was cool. Crossing swords, yeah, that's where. Thanks for, thanks for doing that, yeah. I'm curious. I'm gonna stab somebody on accident. <laughs> Thank you. We're heading into class two, which I think is unarmed combat, which is the actual medieval grappling. And I see them setting up mats over here. Senior instructor John would be running it. And I was hoping that I would actually be able to spar in his class. I got started with this when I was 12 years old. My parents drove me over to some stranger's house, walked us into his backyard, and there was Steven fighting with his brother with two-handed swords. I worked with him for about two years until I was 14. And I found him again coming out of a movie theater and reenacting with him when I was 21. Yeah. And I've been here ever since then. How much of this is hobby versus how much would you say is um, applicable for like a self-defense scenario? Um, I would actually say it's a 50-50. The Master Fior de Libre, he speaks in the area there right now that this should be both seen in the uh, on the street to protect oneself, but also on the open field of conflict. And the fun and the hobby comes into play because it's a different view of what we've used the term grappling in the modern world. When I think of grappling, I come from jujitsu. Get on the ground and hug each other. In the Western martial arts world, wrestling covers both grappling and ground fighting. Should we get started? Yeah, let's what get do we started do? a little bit here right now. If I drop, you just pull that and stick it in the back of my head, right? right? That's the world of it. So when I'm looking at that, I'm looking to but through you. The first technique he showed me was a way to bring somebody down to the ground as they attempt to strike you. I feel I feel almost at home just because like yeah it's grappling. He told me that these techniques actually come from Fiori, the author of the book that Steven had earlier shown me in his library. He emphasized again that we're trying to avoid going down to the ground with someone who has a weapon since you want to keep your distance if you don't have control over the weapon. If they pull a knife out there right now, hop back. Next up, once again, very similar to action and reaction in jujitsu, he showed me a counter to the first move. I'm gonna drop my hand. This is the weird part. Yeah. Just underneath that glute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want you walking away from me. Yeah. You're doing almost a knee tap yeah. from wrestling. Yeah. That's yeah, funny. right? What's happening is I'm coming to this lake here, I'm popping, <laughs> and he's sitting down. One, oh. two. Okay. Yep. And, that's and we end with a little break fall, too. If we do a low, yeah. think about your good old. Uh, double leg okay. drop, right? You drop my whole body. Yeah. Okay. Or shoot for the glute. Right. But well, the magic's right there. <laughs> Just right right on the... Yep. Well, it's like a handle. Yeah, yeah. it's exactly that. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually what we call all these things. One. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And then I'm dropping. Yeah. It's running through you. Beautiful. He then showed me some counters to my counter, but my counter to his single leg knee tap thing was to shoot my underhook and then a face push. He demonstrated it to me and I was dubious at first, but... Scoop circle. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's stronger right. than I thought, yeah. If we could spar, <laughs> I was definitely going to try that move. Then we did the full sequence. Two right here. Head. I slip back. Step in. Keep that head pressure. Oh, keep the head Yeah, pressure. that's always what we want, is we want to maintain that head pressure the entire oh, time. Oh, the hand. Yeah. Got it. And right there. No matter the fight, every fighter's got a turn. But when we play this, we try to make the other person's turn recovery. I'm still, I'm forcing you to constantly like react to like mm -hmm. what I'm doing, right? Wow. Boom, 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 yeah. I go in. Yeah, okay. push, push, whip. Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> in that world, we're always looking at that armed space, yeah. right? And that can be anything from a tool of this size, but then there's the medieval dagger as well. In fact, actually, I have a trainer for it. I'll be right back over. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay. No, he had to be the knife. Yeah, yeah he had to be the knife I don't the first day. <laughs> that is the medieval tra dagger. This was interesting to see all of the technique, but I still hadn't confirmed if we could spar, and I really wanted to know how this would play out in a sparring context. Then, before class was over, it was time for me to pop the question. Is there any sort of... Um, a little bit of rolling sparring work? A little bit of work? sparring, because I've never... Because I would be honored to be able to spar with you a little okay. bit there. I'm worried. You'll do fine, man. Okay. I felt you pull on me. Now, it was time. 
The rules were simple. In a three minute round, whoever could make the other person fall more times than they fell would win. In the initial engagement, I just focused on hand fighting and trying to win inside position. He tried to grab my leg, but I managed the distance with an underhook. I got lazy though, and I gave him space for the move of the day, the face push, and then he picked up my leg for a single. I tried to keep my balance, and then I circled my leg out to negate his attempt to take me down. It was working until I gave him space again for his first scoring takedown with the face push. We started tying up again, and this time I wanted to make sure I stayed close and connected. But his face pushes were still giving me problems. So I decided to give him a little taste of his own medicine and went for my own face push blouse pole combo. There you go. That was medieval grappling technique, hell yeah. The score was now tied one to one with just a little bit of time remaining on the clock. He kept pushing my face, so I pushed his face back. I shot for an underhook and he was doing good with the hand fighting. I got a little cocky and didn't fight the single leg as hard as I should, and he unexpectedly hit me with a reverse collar tie, bringing me down to the mat. It was now two to one, and I was about to lose if I couldn't at least score one more fall and bring it to a tied score. I picked up the pace, hand fighting, and even scored double underhooks with connected hands, but the old reliable face push helped him detach from me. He went for the leg grab and I countered with an inside single. I switched to a knee tap, but he was able to defend it and then another single attempt. With only seconds remaining, I shot in for another single, trying to lift the leg to off balance him, but it was too late. Good job, sir. Good job, sir. Is the face pushes. I see why you're doing the face pushes. And when he actually is able to get to this like face push and then grab my lower back, if I don't prevent that, that actually feels very strong. Um, thank you for the round. That was, my that was fun. Yeah, I got to figure out how to how to counter that. You feel that hand push you? Mm -hmm. Right. That's always the torque when he's seeking right there, right? Uh -huh. So the moment you feel that. I'm stepping in, find my elbow. Good. Now move my elbow sideways. And with that, class was over. And I sat down with Steven to give him some closing thoughts. I was surprised by everything that's happened at tonight. Pretty interestingly effective things that he was doing that I just haven't seen before, which was pretty cool. One of my favorite things to do is to talk with other practitioners and find the similarities. Yeah. There are so many more similarities. I always tell people that we are all on the same mountain, just taking diff different paths to the top. Huge thanks to Steven, John, and the rest of the crew. Oh, and Steven gave me his new book. What do you think about HEMA? Drop a comment below and let me know which martial art you want to see me try next. And if you missed it, here was another more mainstream martial art I tried recently. Like as soon as he got his sword underneath my hilt and we were crossing swords. As soon as we crossed swords. I don't think it's ever good to cross swords. Oh, she helped me earlier. Oh, oh, oh she's running. No, run it, run it. <laughs> we'll catch up, we'll catch up. This is weird now, I just gotta follow her around the belly. Can I give you a fist bump in this? <laughs> Boom. Thanks for the, yeah. <laughs> when I did a little bit of jujitsu there, I used to bring very white on a, on a, uh, yeah. a little iPad. And they say jujitsu. Yeah, I won't say, I won't go there. I won't go. <laughs>